Alright, so we are group 29 and we are solving this beam um, and we are finding the slope at B and the deflection at C. Um, our beam is loaded as such with these supports. At support A there is a roller against a vertical wall. At support B there is a roller on a horizontal plane and at C it is a um, open end. From A to B there is a 2 kip per foot load and at C there is an 8 kip foot load pointing down. Um, the stiffness of the beam from A to B is EI and the stiffness, stiffness from B to C is 2 EI. Um, so in order to find the theta B and the deflection at C we're going to use the conjugate beam method. Um, here we have our free body diagram showing a moment at A, a 20 kip force in the middle of the beam between A and B, and um, a B support pointing up and the A kip force pointing down. We move over here to solve for the forces in the Y direction. Um, as you can see, based on the loading, the Y is 28 kips. We also use the sum of moments around support A to solve for the moment at A, giving us negative 60 kip foot at A. Once we've solved for the supports and the moment, we can draw our shear and moment diagram. We have our shear at A equaling 0, and it goes down to negative 20 at B, jumps 28 kips at A, and goes over to C, where it drops back down 8 kips. Our moment diagram starts at 60 kip foot, has a um, quadratic slope down to negative 40 kips, and then a linear slope to 0 kip foot. Um, in order to solve this problem, we need to put these lines into an equation form. So the shear of x from a to b is negative 2x, and the shear of x from b to c is 8. Our moment of a b of x is negative x squared plus c. In order to solve for c1, we use our known that um, our moment of AB at point A is 60, giving us our equation as such. Um, our, then our moment equation from BC is 8x plus C2. We solve for C2 using our known that the moment at C is 0, giving us C2 equaling negative 20, or then giving us the moment equation from B to C. Now that we have the moment equations from A to B and B to C, we can take that and put it into our conjugate beam where our moment equation of our real beam over EI is equal to our loading of our conjugate beam. So our conjugate beam, we have the assumption that the slope of the real beam is equal to the shear of the conjugate beam and the deflection of the real beam is equal to the moment of the conjugate beam. So we have to change our supports in order to draw the conjugate beam. Here we have our roller staying as a roller our, um, on the end. We have the roller in the middle changing to a pin or a hinge and then our free end support changing to a fixed end support. Um, this accounts for um, these changes that we're making or these assumptions that we're making. So using this equation that our moment of x of our real beam over EI is equal to our loading of our conjugate beam, our loading with our new supports is as shown here with a 60 over EI load here quadratically down here to negative 40 over EI 
there's a slight jump here to negative 20 over EI where our EI has changed from 2E from B to C creating this jump but then we have a linear function from B to C um, to zero again. So now that you've seen our conjugate beam and the loading we will now take the equations that we found um, and the real beam over EI in order to solve for the shear and the moments of the conjugate beam. So to find uh, our slope at B, we need to find the shear at B. So we start with our loading equation from A to B, whenever EI times negative x squared plus 60, we can integrate that to get our shear equation of the conjugate beam, which turns out to be negative 1 over EI, times negative x cubed over 3 plus 60x plus c3. In order to, to solve for c3, we take our known shear at a, which is 0, um, and put it into this equation, giving us c3 equals 0. So now our shear equation from a, b of x is 1 over ei times negative x cubed over 3 plus 60x. Um, Knowing that, we can solve for our shear at B, which is x equals 10, and putting 10 into the equation, it gives us 267 over EI. Um, now that we know the shear of AB of the conjugate beam, that is equal to the slope of B of the real beam, which is 267 over EI. So we solve the first part of the problem. Now to solve the second part, which is the deflection at C. Um, so we start with our loading equation of the conjugate beam. We then integrate that, which gives us 1 over EI times 2x squared minus 60x plus C4. In order to solve for C4, we take our known um, shear, which equals or our known shear at 10, which equals 267 over EI, put that into the equation, which will give us our C4 value of 667. Our final equation for the shear of BC is shown here. We then integrate that to get the moment equation from BC, giving us this equation with an unknown C5. In order to solve for our C5, we know that at uh, x equals 10, our moment is 0, so we put um, that into the equation, which gives us C5 equal ne negative 4,337, giving our final moment equation from BC as such. Um, and then in order to solve for the moment at C, we plug x equals 15 into the equation, um, and as seen here, our, it gives us 1168 over EI, which is also our deflection at C of the real beam, giving us our final answer to the problem.